Hello, third, fourth, and fifth graders. This is Mrs. Trenitza with this week's library lesson. Um, this week we are going to study and learn about another reading strategy um, that will help you with your reading comprehension called sequencing. And pretty much I'm sure you guys have learned about this before. It's um, putting things in order the way that they happen. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so reading comprehension sequencing. All right, your learning intention is that I can use strategies to help my reading comprehension. And success is that I can complete activities that demonstrate understanding of select reading strategies. Okay, so let's talk really quick, which I know we do in most of our lessons, but I think it's a really good review for each lesson, is how do good readers better understand what they read? This is an essential question that we always need to talk about. Well, choosing books that are just right. Um, if We have talked about this many times before. You want to make sure that you're picking a book that isn't too easy and isn't too hard. Um, it's just right. You, you might want to challenge yourself a little bit, but you don't want it to be so hard that um, or so easy that you don't understand what you're reading. Um, because if there's just way too many words you don't understand, then um, you're not going to comprehend what you're reading. Um, and remember the five finger rule. Um, so when you look in a book, you may, you may want to skim the book and see, you know, how many words are on a page that you might not know. Um, so it might just, you know, be just right for you, where it might be slightly challenging, but you know you can get through it and enjoy it and learn something. Um, making and confirming predictions, that's really, that is a good strategy when you are going to read a book. Um, you can look at the cover and kind of do a picture walk through it um, or read like the inside flap of it and make a prediction about what you think it's about and then read the story and see if your prediction is correct. Um, finding words you don't know and figuring out what they mean, um, that's important, you know, learning new vocabulary. Um, making connections, and we've talked about that too. The text-to-text, -text, text to self, text to world. Um, those are really important strategies because um, if you can make those connections with what you're reading, then it'll really help you understand. Also, read aloud fluently. Um, being able to, you know, like say in the classroom, if um, students, or like even virtually, students are taking turns reading something, being able to read it fluently um, will help you better understand what you're reading. Okay, so let's listen to the Brain Pop sequencing video and this will kind of give us um, an idea of how that strategy works. Having things in a story, you know, putting them in order the way that they happened. All right, so let's go ahead and take a listen to the video. Next, Moby. It's called Superbot and the Art Thief. I love this book because the plot is really exciting. The plot is all the events that happen in a story. Events in a story occur in a certain order. What is sequence? Sequence is the order in which things happen or are described. Uh-oh. Somebody is up to no good. To hatch your latest plan, the evil Dr. M breaks into the art museum. Then, she steals the most famous painting in the world. Quick, turn on the signal. Meanwhile, a mild-mannered robot named Mobius D. Bot quietly eats his lunch. When he sees the signal, he springs into action. This looks like a job for Superbot. Superbot chases the evil Dr. M through the city. 
Next, he chases her through the park. After that, he chases her through the zoo. The evil Dr. M gets away, but Superbot doesn't give up easily. The evil Dr. M passes by a store. She just can't resist going inside. But it's a trap. Superbot saves the day. Finally, the painting is back in its rightful place. Transitions can tell you about the sequence of events. What are transitions? A transition is a word that connects ideas together. First, second, third, then, next, and finally are all transitions that describe the order of events. Before, after, later, while, and meanwhile are also transitions that tell about time. Sometimes transitions are called signal words because they're a signal for you to pay attention. As you read, look for transitions that tell you about the sequence. The transitions in this recipe tell you what to do in a certain order. First, cut the carrots. Second, cut the onions. Third, cut the celery. Before you fry them, add salt and pepper. That means the fourth step is to add salt and pepper. After that, you fry the vegetables. How can you take notes on the sequence of events? It's helpful to take notes on the sequence in a graphic organizer. I'm going to use these notes later to help me write a book report. In nonfiction writing, there might be dates and times that tell you when important events happened. You can make a timeline to help keep track of them. Informational writing might explain something or teach how to do something. You can make a flow chart to help you keep track of all the steps. It's a chart that shows what to do first, second, third, and so on. Sometimes the order of events isn't so clear. How can you make inferences about the sequence of events? When you infer, you use what you know or see to come up with an idea. As you read, use clues to make inferences about the sequence. After the evil Dr. M escaped, Superbot came up with a plan. Later, the evil Dr. M fell into his trap. I think Superbot's trap probably took a while to set up. So I can infer that the second part of the story happens later. When I read, I picture what happens in my mind. It helps me understand and think about what I'm reading. Hmm, I wonder what will happen in the next book. What do you think, Moby? Whoa! Moby? Alrighty. So let's go ahead and we could take the easy quiz really quick. Start! Okay, so number one. What do you think happens next? Alright, take a look at Moby. Take a look at the caution sign. Do you think he walks through the halls, falls down onto the floor, eats lunch in the cafeteria, or watches a movie with Mia? Well, let's take a look at the picture. There's a caution wet floor sign, and if you look at Moby's feet, there is a clue that it looks like he's going to fall onto the floor. Good job. So that is a good prediction. We were able to predict by looking at the picture. What do you think happens right before Moby eats lunch? He washes his hands with soap and water. He wakes up and eats a healthy breakfast. 
he plants some carrot seeds in the garden, or he puts on his pajama and goes to bed. So we're talking about sequencing. So what do you think happens right before he eats lunch? What makes the most sense? Well, he's not going to eat breakfast right before he eats lunch. He's not going to plant carrot seeds in his garden, and he's not going to put on his pajamas to go to bed. But like before every meal, he would wash his hands with soap and water. Good job. What might you do after you eat dinner, but before you go to bed? Brush your teeth, eat breakfast, go to recess, or have a picnic? Well, which one makes sense? So think about it. Think about your day. After you eat dinner, but before you go to bed, which one of these makes sense? Well, you know you're not going to eat breakfast after dinner. You know you're not going to go to recess after dinner. And you know you're, you're not going to have a picnic after dinner. But after dinner and before you go to bed, you would brush your teeth. Good job. Okay, which happens first? Moby waits for the paint to dry. Moby gives his picture to a friend. Moby finger paints a colorful picture. Or Moby washes the paint off his fingers. Okay, what would be the first thing that you would need to do? Well, the first thing wouldn't be waiting for the paint to dry because it hasn't even said that he's painted yet, right? Um, giving his picture to a friend, well, that means he has to have painted it, so that wouldn't be the first thing. Washing the paint off his fingers, no, that wouldn't be the first thing because we haven't even been told that he put the paint on his fingers to finger paint. But C says that he finger paints a colorful picture, so that's what the first thing would have to be, right? Then he would wash the paint off his fingers after he's done finger painting. Then he would wait for it to dry and then give it to his friend. But the first thing would be that he would have to paint the picture. Okay, good job, guys. And number five, Moby read a book and then ate a snack. While he ate, he talked to Mia on the phone. Which two things happen at the same time? Eating a snack and reading a book. Reading a book and talking to Mia. Eating a snack and talking to Mia. Or reading a book and eating a snack. Well, let's read it again. It says Moby read a book and then ate a snack. While he ate, he talked to Mia on the phone. So that tells you while he ate, so he was eating, it says he also talked to Mia on the phone. So he ate a snack and talked to Mia. All right, good job, guys. We got all five right. Okay, excellent. Okay, so hopefully that helped you understand a little bit better about sequencing, putting things in order, and when you're talking about a story, means that things that happen in the story, you're putting them in the right order. That's what sequencing is. Okay, this is kind of a cool game um, that I thought we could do maybe two cards on it and practice a little bit about sequencing. Okay, we'll go here. All right, awesome. So let's take a look at this one. We're gonna number each step from one to five to show the correct order, and this is good sequencing practice. So let's read each one. He washed the dishes. He put the dishes away in the cabinet. Tyler filled the sink with soapy water. He puts the dishes into the water. Tyler dried the dishes with a towel. Or actually, it should say he dried the dishes with a towel. Okay, so what would have to be the first thing that he would have to do when it comes to washing dishes? Okay, it says he washes them, he puts them in the cabinet, he fills the sink with water, he puts the dishes in the water, he dries the dishes with a towel. The first thing when you think about washing dishes, you have to fill the sink with soapy water, right? You have to have a place to wash them. So we're going to put a number one. Okay, let's keep looking. So once he puts, fills the sink with soapy water, would he wash the dishes, put them in the cabinet, put the dishes into the water, or dry the dishes with the towel? Well, when you're thinking about the process of washing dishes, first you have to fill the sink with soapy water, right? Then what do you have to do with the dishes before you can wash them? You have to put them into the water. Good job. Okay, so we filled the sink with water, we put the dishes in the water. So now are we going to wash them, put them away in the cabinet, or dry them with a towel? Well, think in your mind the process. 
after you've put the water in the sink, you put the dishes in the water. Now the next step is you're going to wash those dishes, right? Okay, good job. And then after we've washed the dishes, do they go straight into the cabinet or do you dry them with a the towel first? Let's think about it. Right, you would dry them with a towel and then you could put them into the cabinet. All right, good job, guys. Excellent. Okay, let's try another one. All right, Carlita paid for her groceries. She filled her cart with groceries. She loaded the grocery bags into her car. Carlita got an empty cart. She waited in the checkout line. So if she's going to go shopping for her groceries out of this list, what would be the first thing she has to do? Okay, she wouldn't pay for them first. She wouldn't fill her cart with groceries first. She wouldn't load them into her car first, and she wouldn't wait in the checkout line first. If you're going to the grocery store, what's the first thing you need before you start picking out your groceries? You need to get an empty cart. Good job. Okay, once she gets the empty cart, does she pay for the groceries? Does she fill her cart with groceries? Does she load them in her car? Or does she wait in the checkout line? Well, if you have an empty cart and you're going grocery shopping, what do you need to put into that cart before you do anything? You have to fill your cart with groceries. Good job. Okay, so after she's filled it with groceries, is she going to pay for them? Is she going to load them into her car? Or is she going to wait in the checkout line? Well, just imagine, she's at the grocery store, she got her empty cart, she walked around, she filled her cart with groceries. Now, is she just automatically gonna pay for them or does she have to wait in line first? Good job. She has to wait in line and then she would pay for them, right? Good job. And after she's paid for them, then she would leave the store and load them in her car. Good job, guys. All right, let's do one more. Okay. He opened the pizza box on the table. Philip paid the pizza delivery person. He ordered a large pepperoni pizza. Philip and his friends ate the pizza. Philip called the pizza restaurant. Well, if you are thinking about ordering a pizza, what's the first thing that you have to do? You would have to call the pizza restaurant, right? Good job. So after you call the pizza restaurant, are you going to open the bo pizza box on the table, pay the delivery person, order the pizza, or eat the pizza? Well, once you call the pizza restaurant, of course, the next thing you need to do is order the pizza. Good job. And what would be the next step after ordering it? Would you open up the pizza box, pay the delivery driver, or eat the pizza? Well, you've called the restaurant. You've ordered the pizza, so now you're waiting for the pizza to get to your house, right? Once that happens, you've got to pay the delivery person. Once you pay the delivery person and you've got that pizza, are you going to open up the box or are you going to eat it? Well, you'd have to open the box and get the pizza out, right? Then you and your friends could eat it. All right, guys. Good job. Let's do one more. Okay, Maddie put the birdhouse in a tree. Maddie got out the tools she would need. She watched a bird fly into the birdhouse. She painted the birdhouse red and yellow. She used the tools to make a birdhouse. So this sounds like Maddie is, wants to make a birdhouse, right? And it, So before she can do anything, she has to have the birdhouse. So out of all of our choices, she would need to make the birdhouse, so she would need the tools to make it. So the first one's going to be, she used the tools to make a birdhouse. So, did she put it in a tree? And Miss T actually did this wrong because it says, and I'm glad I caught myself, and I hope you guys caught me too, because it said she used the tools to make a birdhouse, but how can she use the tools unless she gets the tools first, right? So she has to go get the tools that she's going to need to build the birdhouse. Then she's going to use the tools to build it. Correct? Good job. Now, is she going to put the birdhouse in the tree, watch a bird fly into it, 
or paint it? Well, those are my three choices for the next one. It would have to be, okay, she got the tools, she used them to make it, now she's going to paint it because she would paint it before she did anything else to it, right? She wouldn't put it in a tree until after she painted it. So she got the tools, she built the birdhouse, she painted the birdhouse, then she put the birdhouse in the tree. Good job. Then once it's in the tree, then she can watch the birds fly into the birdhouse. Good job. And I hope you guys caught my mistake there. Okay, let's look at this one here. Marco called his dog Luna. He took Luna for a walk around the block. Marco let Luna off the leash. Marco and Luna went back inside. Marco put Luna on her leash. Okay, so let's take a look. Um, this one is a little tricky. So he called his dog Luna. He took Luna for a walk around the block. He let her off the leash. They went back inside and he put Luna on her leash. So if he needs to take his dog for a walk, what would be the first thing he would do? He would call his dog, right? To get his dog ready for the walk. Then he would have to put her on a leash. Once he put her on the leash, then he would take her for a walk. After he took her for a walk, they would go back inside. Then once they're inside, he could take Luna off of her leash. Let's see if we're right. This one is a little tricky. Oh, we are. Good job. Okay, let's look at this one here. She swung the bat but missed the ball. She crossed home plate for a home run. Sophie waited for the first pitch. Sophie hit the ball far into right field. Sophie ran around the bases. Okay, so it sounds like Sophie's playing baseball, right? So what would be the first thing? She swings the bat and misses, crosses home plate, waits for the first pitch, hits the ball, or ran around the bases. Well, to start everything off, she would have to wait for the first pitch, right? Because she'd have to, they would have to pitch the ball to her for her to try to hit the ball. Okay, this talks about her crossing home plate, hitting the ball, and running around the bases. Well, in order to do that, but we also have this choice, swung the bat but missed the ball. Well, if we picked down here saying that she hit the ball, then we couldn't say she missed it after she had already hit it, right? So we'll have to say she waited for the first pitch, and then she did try to swing but missed it. And then the next one, she hit the ball, so she waited for the first pitch, she swung it and missed it, but then the next time, number three, she hit it far into right field, so that means she would have ran around the bases, and then she came to the home plate for a home run. Let's see if this is right. Excellent. Okay, it sprang out of the water at a tapper. The anaconda waited, hidden in the water. It squeezed the tapper until it was dead. It wrapped its body around the tapper. The anaconda swallowed the tapper whole. So we know that an anaconda is a big snake, right? So did the snake spring out of the water first at the tapper? Did it, did the, did the snake wait hidden in the water? Did it squeeze the tapper? Did it wrap its body around it? Or did it swallow the tapper whole? Well, the first thing, if we look at all of these, in order for it to be able to get a hold of the tapper and squeeze it and eat it, it would have to catch it first, right? Well, the first one says it sprang out of the water. But first, if you read the second one, it says it waited hidden in the water. So it hid in the water before it pounced, right? While it was hiding in the water, then it sprang out of the water at the tapper. 
Once it sprung out of the water at the tapper, did it squeeze it? Did it wrap its body around it? Or did it swallow it? Well, in order for it to squeeze it, it has to wrap its body around it first, right? So it hid in the water, it sprang out at the tapper. Then once it got it, it wrapped its body around the tapper. It squeezed it until it was no longer alive and then it swallowed it. Okay, guys. And you can always pause these when Miss T is done and just double check and see if you think I'm right before Miss T hits the submit button. Okay, good job. All right, let's take a look at this one. He took the toy truck out of the box. Jesse untied the bow at the top. Jesse opened the box. He tore the wrapping paper off. Grandma gave Jesse a present. Well, before you can actually rip the paper off and open it up and see what it is, somebody has to give you a present, right? So Grandma, the first one would be Grandma gave Jesse a present. Okay, did he take the toy truck out of the box, untie the bow, open the box, or tear the wrapping paper off? Well, I would think if you have a, a present and you've got a bow on the top, First, before you do anything, you're going to take the bow off of the top, right? Then you would tear the wrapping paper off. Then you would have to open the box to see what's inside. Then the toy truck that's inside, you would take out. So if you want to pause it here and just double check and make sure that you think I did that correctly. That's it. Okay, Maria found the bottle on the beach. Tom wrote a note and put it in the bottle. She brought the note to the Coast Guard. He threw the bottle into the ocean. Coast Guard rescued Tom. Okay, so what's got to be the first thing that's going to happen? So it sounds like Tom is lost somewhere and needs help, right? So would Maria find the bottle? Would Tom write a note and put it in the bottle? Would Maria take it to the Coast Guard? Would he... Tom throw it in the ocean or would the Coast Guard rescue Tom? Well, the first thing is if Tom's out there lost, he wants to be found, right? So he's going to have to write a note and put it in a bottle. Okay, so what happens after that? Does Maria find it? Does she take it to the Coast Guard? Did he throw it into the ocean or did the Coast Guard rescue Tom? Well, if he wrote a note and put it in the bottle, well, for it to get anywhere, he has to throw it in the ocean, right? Okay. Now it's in the ocean, so imagine it floating in the ocean. Did Maria find it, take it to the Coast Guard, or did the Coast Guard rescue Tom? Well, if it's floating in the ocean, somebody has to find it first, right? So Maria found the bottle on the beach. Once she found it, what'd she do? Could the Coast Guard rescue Tom? Well, first she has to take it to the Coast Guard, right? And then the Coast Guard could rescue Tom. Okay, good job. And you can always pause this too before Miss T starts going through and putting numbers next to them and see if you could figure it out yourself before Miss T does it. Okay. They got strapped into their seats. They waited in line. Jason Kim zoomed down the hill. Jason Kim bought tickets for the roller coaster. The roller coaster crept up the big hill. Okay. Well, the first thing that they'd have to do before they could even think about riding the ride would be they have to buy tickets for it right okay so once they bought tickets then just imagine you buy your tickets now you're going to wait in line then once you've waited in line of course you'll finally get onto the roller coaster so you're going to put on your seat belts and then think about when you're on a roller coaster do you go up the big hill first or zoom down the hill well, you'd have to go up the hill first, right? And then zoom down the hill. And you can pause it here and make sure you think Miss T is correct. Okay, good job. And we'll go ahead and stop there. That was some good practice. Okay, I hope you guys enjoy that. I really like putting things in order, sequencing them. Okay. So now we're going to listen to a story. Um, we're going to listen to the book version of Jumanji. And um, what you're going to do for me after, we're just going to listen to it so you can enjoy the story. 
But once you've listened to this whole lesson, then you will be able to go back and Miss T put it on here also. You can take a piece of paper and you can make your own graphic organizer for Jumanji. And this is what it's going to look like. And you can pause it here and make your own at home on a piece of paper. And then go back through the movie, I meant through the story. And I want you to stop the story at these different times for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Once you do that, then for like number one, you're going to stop the story at 58 seconds. Once you have done that, then you are going to write down um, what has happened so far in the story, and that will go under first. Then you'll continue writing, I mean, listening to the story, and then at two minutes and 20 seconds for number two, you'll stop it, and then you're going to put in the number two box what has happened between so far after the first box, okay, and, and so on. So like for box number three, you'll stop it at 355 and you'll write in the box what's happened since then. Four, you'll stop it at six minutes and you will write, okay, what's happened up until six minutes. And then for number five, you'll um, stop it at seven minutes, eight seconds, and you will write in the box what has happened up until then. And then you'll do the same thing for six, seven, and eight with the times that it tells you, okay? And then this is a way that you can practice sequencing. You can pay really close attention to the story and then put down what you hear happens, okay? And then you can um, always, um, if you are able to take a piece of paper and do your own graphic organizer and fill it all in, um, you can always uh, take a picture and share it with Miss T. And Miss T can take a look and um, see you know, the job that you did and make sure that you were paying attention and listening to the story. Okay, all right, and I'm going to go ahead and just play the story for you so that we can enjoy it. And then, like I said, after the lesson, then you can make your graphic organizer and um, work on filling out your graphic organizer while you listen to the story again. Oops, sorry about that. Let's go back here. Jumanji by Chris Van Allsburg. Now remember, Mother said, your father and I are bringing some guests home after the opera, so keep this house neat. Okay, Miss T's just pausing it for a second because this is where I want to show you. If you look down here to the bottom left, this is where you will see the timing. And in each of the boxes on the graphic organizer, Miss T showed you where you're going to... Um, pause um, the lesson uh, during this video so that you can stop it and you can um, write on your graphic organizer what happened up until that time. Okay? Quite so, added Father, tucking his scarf into his coat. Mother peered into the hall mirror and carefully pinned her hat in place, then knelt and kissed both children goodbye. When the front door closed, Judy and Peter giggled with delight. They took their toys out of their toy chest and made a terrible mess. But their laughter slowly turned into silence. And finally, Peter slouched into his chair. You know what, he said. I'm really bored. Me too, sighed Judy. Why don't we go outside and play? Peter agreed, so they set off across the street to the park. It was cold for November. The children could see their breath like steam. They rolled in the leaves, and Ju when Judy tried to stuff some leaves down Peter's sweater, he jumped up and ran behind a tree. When his sister caught up with him, he was kneeling at the foot of a tree, holding a long, thin box. What's that? asked Judy. It's a game, said Peter, handing her the box. Jumanji, Judy read from the box, a jungle adventure game. Look, said Peter, pointing at the note taped at the bottom of the box. 
in a childlike handwriting were some words. Free game. Fun for some, but not for all. P.S. Read instructions carefully. Want to take it home? asked Judy. Not really, said Peter. I'm sure somebody left it here because it's so boring. Oh, come on, protested Judy. Let's give it a try. Race you home. And off they ran, with Peter at her heels. At home, the children spread the game out on a card table. It, took, it looked very much like the other games they already had. There was a board that unfolded, revealing a path of colored squares. The squares had messages written on them. The path started in the deepest jungle and ended in Jumanji, a city of golden buildings and towers. Peter began to shake the dice and play with the other pieces that were in the box. Put those down and listen, said Judy. I'm going to read the instructions. Jumanji, a young people's jungle adventure, especially designed for the bored and restless. A. Player selects a piece and places it in the deepest jungle. B. Player rolls dice and moves pieces along the path through the dangers of the jungle. C. First player to reach Jumanji and yell the city's name aloud is the winner. Is that all? asked Peter, sounding disappointed. No, said Judy. There's one more thing, and this is in capital letters. D. Very important. Once a game of Jumanji is started, it will be it will not be over until one player reaches the Golden City. Oh, big deal, said Peter, who gave a bored yawn. Here, said Judy, handing her brother the dice. You go first. Peter casually dropped the dice from his hand. Seven, said, Julie, said Judy. Peter moved his piece to the seventh square. Lions attack. Move back two spaces, read Judy. Gosh, how exciting, said Peter in a very unexcited voice. As he reached for his pieces, he looked up at his sister. She had a look of absolute horror on her face. Peter, she whispered, turn around very, very slowly. The boy turned in his chair. He could not believe his eyes. Lying on the piano was a lion, staring at Peter and licking his lips. The lion roared so loud it knocked Peter right off of his chair. The big cat jumped to the floor. Peter was up on his feet and running through the house with the lion a whisker's length behind. He ran upstairs and dove under the bed. The lion tried to squeeze under but got his head stuck. Peter scrambled out and ran from the bedroom and slammed the door behind him. He stood in the hall with Judy, gasping for breath. I don't think, Peter said in between breaths, gasping for air, that I want to play this game anymore. But we have to, said Judy, as she helped Peter back downstairs. I'm sure that's what the instructions mean. That lion will not go away until we, until one of us wins this game. Peter stood next to the card table. Can we just call the zoo and have, them, have him take him away? From upstairs came the sounds of growling and clawing at the bedroom door. Or maybe we could wait until father comes home. No one would come from the zoo because they wouldn't believe us, said Judy. And you know how upset mother would be if there was a lion in the bedroom. We started this game and now we have to finish it. Peter looked down at the game board. What if Judy rolled a seven? Then there'd be two lions. For an instant, Peter thought he was going to cry. Then 
He sat firmly in his chair and said, Let's play. Judy picked up the dice, rolled an eight, and moved her piece. Monkeys steal food. Miss one turn, she read. From the kitchen came the sounds of banging pots and falling jars. The children ran to ran in to see a dozen monkeys tearing the room apart. Oh boy, said Peter. This would upset Mother even more than the lion. Quick, said Judy, back to the game. Peter took his turn. Thank heavens he landed on a blank space. He rolled again. Monsoon season begins. Lose one turn. Little raindrops began to fall in the living room. Then a roll of thunder shook the walls and scared the monkeys out of the kitchen. The rain began to fall in buckets as Judy took the dice. Guide gets lost. Lose one turn. The rain suddenly stopped. The children turned to see a man hunched over a map. Oh dear, I say. Spot of bad luck now, he murmured. He mumbled. Perhaps a left turn here. Then... No, no. A right turn here. Yes, absolutely. I think. A right turn. Or maybe... Excuse me, said Judy, but the guide just ignored her. Around here, then over. No, no. Over here, around this. Yes, good. But then... Hmm... Judy shrugged her shoulders and handed the dice to Peter. Four, five, six, he counted. Bitten by Setsy Fly. Contract sleeping sickness. Lose one turn. Judy heard a faint buzzing noise and watched a small insect land on Peter's nose. Peter lifted his hand to brush the bug away, but then stopped, gave a tremendous yawn, and fell sound asleep with his head on the table. Peter, Peter, wake up, cried Judy, but it was no use. She grabbed the dice and moved to a blank. She rolled again and waited in amazement. Rhinoceros stampede, go back two spaces. As fast as he had fallen asleep, Peter awoke. Together they listened to the rumble in the hallway. It grew louder and louder. Suddenly, a herd of rhinos charged through the living room and into the dining room, crushing all of the furniture in their path. Peter and Judy covered their ears as the sound of splintering wood and breaking china filled the house. Peter gave the dice a quick tumble. Python sneaks into camp. Go back one space. Judy shrieked and jumped on her chair. Over the fireplace, said Peter. Judy sat down again nervously eyeing the eight-foot snake that was wrapping itself around the mantel clock. The guide looked up from his map, took one look at that snake, and moved to the far corner of the room, joining the monkeys on the couch. Judy took her turn and landed on a blank space. Her brother took the dice and rolled a three. Oh, no, he moaned. Volcano erupts. Go back three spaces. The room became warm and started to shake. Molten lava poured out of the fireplace opening. It hit the water on the floor, and the room filled with steam. Judy rolled the dice and moved ahead. Discover shortcut. Roll again. Oh, dear, she cried. Judy saw the snake unwrapping himself from the clock. If you roll a twelve, you can get out of the jungle, said Peter. Please, please, Judy begged as she shook the dice. The snake, the snake was wriggling his way to the floor. She dropped the dice from her hand. One six, then another. Judy grabbed her piece and slammed it to the board. Jumanji, she yelled as loud as she could. The steam in the room became thicker and thicker. Judy could not even see Peter across the table. Then, as if the doors and the windows had all been opened, a cool breeze of... The cool breeze came in and cleared the room of the steam. Everything was just as it had been before the game.
No monkeys, no guide, no water, no broken furniture, no snake, no lion roaring upstairs, and no rhinos. Without saying a word to each other, Peter and Judy threw the game into its box. Then they bolted out the door and ran across the street to the park and dropped the game under the tree. Back home, they quickly put all of their toys back away. But both children were too excited to sit quietly. So Peter took out a picture puzzle. As they fit the pieces together, their excitement slowly turned to relief, and then to exhaustion. With the puzzle half done, Peter and Judy fell asleep on the sofa. Wake up, dears, said Mother's, called Mother's voice. Judy opened her eyes. Mother and father had returned and their guests were arriving. Judy and Peter, Judy gave Peter a nudge to wake him. Yawning and stretching, they got to their feet. Mother introduced them to some of the guests, then asked, Did you have an exciting afternoon? Oh, yes, said Peter. We had a flood, a stampede, a volcano. I got sleeping sickness and... Peter was interrupted by the adult's laughter. Well, said Mother, I think you both got sleeping sickness. Why don't you go upstairs and put your pajamas on? Then you can finish putting your puzzle together and have some dinner. When Peter and Judy came back downstairs, they found that Father had moved their puzzle into the den. While the children were working on it, one of the guests, Mrs. Budwing, brought them a tray of food. Such a hard puzzle, she said to the children. Daniel and Walter are always starting puzzles and never finishing them. Daniel and Walter were Mrs. Budwing's sons. They never read instructions either. Oh, well, said Mrs. Budwing, turning to rejoin the other guests. I guess they'll learn. Both children answered. I hope so. But they weren't looking at Mrs. Budwing. They were looking out the window. Two boys were running through the park. They were Danny and Walter Budwing, and Danny had a long, thin box under his arm. Okay, guys. That was a pretty interesting story. I hope that you enjoyed it. So now what you can do, if you want, and this is just so you can practice your sequencing, you can make your own copy of this graphic organizer with a piece of paper. You can go back into the lesson and you can play the story, but this time stop it at each of these times that are in the boxes. And then in each of the boxes, you're going to write what happened in the story up until that time. Okay, and then if you want to submit it to me and I can take a look at it, and see that you have tried and you're practicing, that would be great. Um, I hope that you guys enjoyed the lesson on sequencing. I really like it. I think it's just kind of cool to be able to put things in order the way that they're supposed to be. Um, and if you want to take time to do this, that would be great. And also, I hope that you did enjoy the story. Okay, well, that is it for this time. Um, if you need anything from Ms. T, just email me or message me on the Library Google Classroom. Please make sure you follow directions, um, what your teachers tell you to do, what your parents tell you to do, get your schoolwork done, and I will talk to you next time. Okay, guys. Bye-bye.